Everyone, we are live. We are live. Are we ready? Is this, it's not quite six o'clock. We got a few seconds. Yeah. Ready to get started. Uh, so, welcome everyone to the August 11th, 2020 Board of Chosen Freeholders meeting. Um, we're going to start off with a roll call. Who were you on? Yes. Uh, free, uh, freeholders Octor. Here. Bartlett. Here. Best. Duffy. Here. Ames. Here. Deputy Director Lapour. Here. Director Lazare. Here. Can we please have an the announcement of the open public meeting? The public notice, take notice, the Passaic County Board of Chosen Freeholders on January 6, 2020, adopted resolution R-2020-0001, which calls for the location of the conference and regular meeting scheduled for Tuesday, Tuesday, August 11th, 2020 at 5.30 p.m. and 6 p.m. respectively. Pursuant to Administrative Order 20-01 issued by Passaic County Administrator closing the administration building to non-essential personnel and the public of March 18th, 2020 at 8.30 a.m., the board is canceling the conference agendas for these uh, meetings and shall hold the regular meeting at 6 p.m. with no members of the public physically present and authorized under N NJSA 10-4-12A. If a member of the public wishes to place a public comment on record, please email public, public at PasaicCountyNJ.org stating your name, address, and matter to be addressed by the board no later than August 11, 2020 at 5 p.m. respectively, and by participating in Facebook Live or via the board's WebEx virtual meeting platform. The clerk of the board shall read the same to the public record. Moreover, some members of the board will be participating telephonically pursuant to the board's bylaws in compliance with NJSA 10 colon 4 dash 12 dash 1 S at SEC. Official action will be taken. This was placed, uh, this public notice was placed in the June 26 uh, record and the Herald News. Can we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the Republic, which is the nation, under God. Liberty, justice. Um, we're going to take a moment of silence to remember all the men and women who have died while serving in the armed forces of the states. Uh, there are two people in particular that I would like to recognize. Uh, our own Kathleen Karen and Isam Khalifa, who both passed away within the last two weeks. It's going to be a great loss to the county. And Patterson Councilwoman Magda O'Keefe who just passed away yesterday. Please keep them all in your prayers. Thank you. Could I have a motion to approve the minutes of July 14th, 2020? I'll make that motion. Second. TJ. Hey, T. <laughs> yes? Hi. I can't hear Lou. Holders Octor. Yes. Bartlett. Yes. Best. Yes. Duffy. 
Yes. James? Yes. Repeat Director Lepore? Yes. Director Lazare? Yes. Um, we're going to move on to free. Is uh, Dr. Gunghill on this call, on this meeting? Yes, I am. Okay, so we usually start with your update. So, Dr. Gunghill, if you could. Sure. Micah? All right, so good. Next slide, please. Good afternoon, evening, everyone. This is an update as of uh, today, August 11th. This is day 151 since the pandemic COVID 19 entered into Passaic County. Next slide, please. This is our usual dashboard where I show you where we stand um, globally. Uh, and uh, so there's the worldwide data. Uh, United States, New Jersey, and where we are in New Jersey. So currently we have uh, 17,665 uh, confirmed cases and 1,094 uh, confirmed deaths. Next slide, please. All right, we remain in the top five counties for uh, COVID-19 positive cases. Uh, Bergen has been at the front of this. Um, they've been the epicenter for uh, the state and they remain there at this time. Next slide, please. This is the epi curve for Passaic County uh, from the beginning of uh, this pandemic of March 14th to, to now. And you could see um, from this slide that at the very beginning when we started, um, we started to go up, our curve started to go up. And so between the end of March and early May is where you see a concentration of cases. And as we became uh, used to used to wearing masks and practicing social distancing and so on, you can see that we really did crush that curve. And from about the middle of uh, May uh, until today, you can see about half of this of this slide represents a, a minimal number of cases, and and it really is showing demonstrate the work that was done by all of us, from the governor with closing everything to the freeholders with closing all of the offices to the public and so on, enforcing the rules, and so that's why we're seeing that nice level sort of endemic. Um, uh, COVID-19 in our population. Next slide, please. So this case shows COVID-19 by municipality. And again, I've, I have Patterson's data and you can see on the, on the left that uh, Patterson represents 39% of cases of COVID-19 in Passaic County, followed by Passaic City with 19%. Uh, Clifton with 16, Wayne with 8%. And the other municipalities, the other 12 municipalities are a combination of 2 to 1% of cases of positive COVID-19 cases. So again, 39 for Patterson, 19 for Passaic, 16 Clifton, and 8% Wayne. Next slide, please. All right, this slide shows a breakdown by gender right now. It's 50-50, uh, male and female. And uh, on the right of the slide shows the breakdown um, by age group. And age group is, is grouped into 10-year increments. So for, you can see in the middle that tallest slide, the blue, the tallest um, uh, column is uh, ages 50 to 59. 19% of COVID-19 positive cases in Passaic County um, are represented by this age group, followed by 40 to 49 percent, I mean, 40 to 49 year olds and 30 to 39 year olds. Um, the next one after that is 60 to 69 year olds. So these are the people who have tested positive. As you can see, a large number of them are in the 50. 59 age group. Next slide, please. 
Okay, so this begins uh, some other pieces of data regarding uh, deaths in the state county. Next slide. Next slide. All right, so this slide uh, represents uh, where people are dying from in Passaic County COVID-19. Again, you can see Patterson at 30% of the deaths, but remember, Patterson had 39% of the cases, and which is almost 40%, and 30% of the deaths. Uh, Passaic City, which had 19% of cases, have about the same, 20% of the deaths. Notice, though, that Wayne is now number three on, in deaths in Passaic County at 17%, whereas on the cases, there were only 9%. Uh, Clifton at 30% deaths, and I believe that they were approximately the same in cases. So the, the big change here is Patterson representing 30% of the deaths, and Wayne um, then doubling in deaths um, for people who were positive for COVID-19. You know the reason. Next slide, please. All right, so this is death by Dr. Jen. Dr. Can, I, can, yes. can you hear me? Yes. On that last, if the mic could just go back to that last slide for one minute. The the 30%, that was a 30% of all deaths in Passaic County, not 30% of all cases in Patterson, right? Just Correct. to be clear. Okay. So, so this slide and two slides back represents the countywide data. So 30% of all deaths due to COVID in Passaic County were from residents of the city of Patterson. Thank you for that clarification. Anytime. Next slide, please. All right. So this one shows the deaths by gender. You can see that male, <clears throat> excuse me, 57% of those who died from COVID-19 in Passaic County were male, 41% female, 2% uh, unknown, two or, yeah. So it's very, it's very interesting how that changes every month. And one of these, one of these months, I'm going to uh, put that together and show you how that has changed over time. Next slide, please. Oh, wait, wait, uh, can, can you hang on a second? Sorry. So the, the, um, the pie next to it, the pie chart next to it, um, shows you the deaths by by age. And you could see on that slide that um, people who are between the ages of 80 and 89 years old make up about 25% of the deaths due to COVID-19. The next eight, 10 year age group is 70 to 79%, which makes up 22% of the people who died from COVID in Passaic County. So just between those two age groups, 70 to 79, 80 to 89 years old, you could see 46% or almost half of the people who died from COVID-19 in Passaic County since this began are people in those two, uh, between the ages of 70 and 90 years old. All right, next slide. Please. All right, so the state started to do some more breakout of data, and this one shows, but this is a New Jersey uh, dashboard data. So we do not have that data yet for Passaic County, but I just wanted to put it out there because as soon as we get it, I'll be able to share it with you. When you break it down by race and ethnicity in Passaic County, you'll see 53.3% of the people who died in New Jersey um, were white. 19.4% Hispanic, 18.5 Black, 5.4 Asian, and 3.4 other. And other could be any of those categories, but did not, it could also be people who did not disclose their race and ethnicity. Next slide, please. This slide is also a Jersey wide slide, and it just shows you the underlying, the known underlying conditions for COVID-19. Um, please note that the number of people for whom that data is available is under 7,000. So it's not a large sample size, uh, but you could see predominantly people are dying from heart disease, from diabetes, other chronic diseases. And um, 
so it's it's a it's a an interesting thing to see because we already know that for the industrial nations, including uh, the U.S., including even New Jersey, that people are dying mostly from heart disease, uh, sir. And we also know that diabetes is an underlying condition for heart disease. So when you put all of these uh, conditions into the into the mix with COVID, uh, these people are affected more than other uh, groups of individuals. Next slide, please. All right, so this slide is a little bit busy, um, but it, it's a comparison slide to show you each municipality in Passe County, the total population based on 2018 data, the total cases, deaths, but the breakout, and I, I showed you this sli a similar slide to this last time. Um, and the thing I want to point out to you is, uh, is that the uh, seniors, where they are affects how Passaic County is represented in cases and in deaths. And we're gonna use the first line, which is um, Bloomingdale. And you could see that uh, in Bloomingdale, 70% of the people who had COVID-19 tested positive were in the community. But if you look at the last column, 67% of the deaths in Bloomingdale were from people who resided at a long-term care facility. All right. In Clifton, uh, it's not so. It's not 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 quite the same. Again, it's interesting to look at numbers because it tells you a, a different story. So in Clifton, ninety-five percent of the cases were in the community, um, but in long-term care, thirty percent of the deaths. So it's a little bit more. Um, I don't want to say evenly distributed, but it's not as dramatic as um, in Bloomingdale. In Passaic City, you see 92% were community cases, 8% um, were long-term care cases, but 26% of the deaths in Passaic due to COVID were from long-term care residents. Um, and the same thing goes through, I think the most dramatic one is uh, is uh, probably Wayne. Uh, Wayne with 26% community cases. Um, and well, uh, I guess it's the same. Uh, Long term care deaths are 83%. So 74, 83, 26, 17. It's not so bad. But again, the, the, the big, the story with this slide in general is that though we have many cases, it's very, from the breakout that I'm providing here, it shows that long-term care facilities in Passaic County, similar to the state of New Jersey and in many other states, uh, the residents of long-term care are affected most um, than in the in the in the regular community, and that could be for underlying health conditions. Age is a factor. Um, they're a vulnerable population because they also are in one place. So they're almost like sit, sitting, uh, whereas other people have other places that they can move around and won't have that contact uh, with the long-term care residents. It's, it's, uh, it's not the same. All right, next slide, please. All right, so this, this is a slide that uh, the first one you, you saw, first time you saw this was last month where you had asked for information regarding per capita cases um, I also put in uh, fatality rates and mortality. And again, cases per capita is the general population from that municipality. The fatality rate is uh, people who die who were sick from COVID that died from it for that municipality. And the mortality rate is how you present it per 1,000 population. So that's why the that's what the numbers look like. Um, if we pick one cue, you Dr. Can... Gungel, if I could interrupt one more uh, time, but the, and again, I just for people who may be watching this at home, the, the per capita cases is only those who were tested, right? So of the 8,000 people who were who live in Bloomingdale, not all 8,000 people have been tested, right? Maybe, no, only, but... maybe only a quarter of them have been tested. Maybe only a quarter of them have been tested, but the per capita represents, Mr. DeNova, uh, the entire population. 
that reside in that municipality. So that's why the number is so. Well, the low. fatality, the fatality rate, I get, but but it's it's. So in the second, so in the second column, me, the numerator. We can't sorry. say that two percent of the of 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 Bloomingdale were positive, right? We could only say two percent of Bloomingdale who tested were positive. There could have been plenty of people who were never tested. There's plenty of people who were never tested, but the per capita represents all of the people, Mr. Director. So, so the numerator is the number of positive tests and the denominator is the total municipal population. I'm sorry, which, which one are you asking me? Uh, the, the, the same one that Mr. Denova is asking you about. I want to make sure I understand. Um, so the numerator of cases per capita is number of positive tests and the denominator is the total municipal population. Yes. Okay. So the couple of slides back. Um, you can see that for Bloomingdale, there were, for Bloomingdale, there were 185 cases. If you divide that by the total population, which is 8072, right, you will get 0 0.022, which is about, which you multiply that by 100 and you'll get the per capita, which Go back. There you go. So that's the two percent. Okay. Okay. All right. And the fatality, I think. Um, so this one is uh, from the people who tested positive for COVID nineteen. So that that would be the denominator, and the numerator is the uh, the people who died. And that's also a rate, so that's times 100. I have a question. The, the higher rates are, are municipalities or cities that had long-term care facilities, maybe? That's what it appears to be. Is that correct? Okay, let's see. Well, are you talking about fatality rate now? This I'm talking about the mortality rate period uh, per, per thousand. It, it looks like those places that have um, a larger percentage of long-term care facilities seem to have slightly larger uh, mortality rates per thousand. And I'm guessing that's what the effect is. So this would be the, no, no, the, the, the best way to look at that one would be, um, it would be uh, fatality rate because it tells you how dangerous the organism is. Um, right. Well, even that, even that, that they're, they're elevated for, yeah. uh, let's yeah. see, Bloomingdale, Wayne, yeah. Wanakew, uh, so that sort of fits, right? Yes, yes, okay. yes. But, but you, what I'm saying is that you can also see it better with the fatality rate because those numbers are dramatically different than the, than the small, looking at the small numbers, right? Yeah, I, I get it. Okay, thanks. Yeah, okay, welcome. Next slide, please. All right, so overall in Jose County, so this population is a population estimate as of 2018, and um, this is overall cases per capita and overall fatality and overall mortality. Next slide, please. All right, so I broke this out again, and uh, probably I'll break it out until until it's better. Um, at the height of the outbreak, uh, we had 30 long term care facilities that had uh, COVID-19 outbreaks. Currently, there are 15 of them that still have it. And and um, just as a disclaimer, um, I want to say about 2 weeks ago, the CDC and DOH change the criteria for a long-term care to remain as an outbreak from, uh, from two months to three months. In other words, uh, initially they had said once they go through um, two incubation period and then another month, so uh, then you could remove, then if you have another case at the end of two months, um, that would be a new outbreak. Now they're saying it's the same outbreak. So. There's a lot of, there are a lot of moving parts with the definitions. Um, and so earlier in the pandemic and now, um, 
criteria have changed. So I don't know looking back when we really try to crunch the numbers and see what what the result of the pandemic is, what that's going to look like for us. Anyway, um, so overall, there were over 1300 residents of long term care facilities who tested positive. Um, currently, there are only about 568 Please note. Please note that many individuals have moved, have passed on, um, but many have also survived. Uh, 816 staff members overall have tested positive for COVID-19 in long-term care places. Um, currently, there are 438 staff members, and that's always a difficult piece to manage because once people leave uh, their jobs and they go home to their private lives, there is no real control over what they do in terms of, of social distancing, in terms of wearing their masks and hand washing and sanitizing. So it becomes very um, challenging for long term care facilities to maintain um, being COVID free when when staff are continually um, bringing back. So, uh, you know, I, I applaud those ones those long-term care facilities who were able to manage um, their COVID-19 outbreaks. Okay, um, uh, 403 residents have died and 15 staff members have died from COVID-19. Next slide, please. All right, uh, next topic is uh, COVID-19 testing. As you know, we tested almost 1,600 people at our drive-through testing site at William Pattis University. Um, currently, we still have two testing programs very active. Uh, the test at home, program, which has test, tested over 5,500 individuals, and the uh, mobile testing in the community, which has tested over 7,500 uh, individuals. Next slide, please. Okay, so we are now in our second round of community testing or mobile testing in the community. This particular slide shows you the municipalities that we were, that we have been at. The number, the large number, is an, represents the numbers uh, of people we have tested at that location. Uh, the two represents the number of times we've been there thus far. Um, please note that in some instances, uh, when we test at a location, uh, actually every place that we test is open to any resident of Jose County, but in some cases, we're also targeting, um, you know, specific municipalities as well. Next slide, please. Dr. Gungill and, and the freeholders, I'd like to uh, just mention one thing that I found out today. The 12 counties that did not receive CARES funding money, uh, the state has decided to um, give them some of the money that the state has received. In exchange, the state is requiring each one of the counties to sign a memorandum of agreement, uh, which in part would require each one of those counties to continue testing through the end of the year. Um, and one of the uh, examples in the MOA that each of those 12 counties received as a best practices was in fact uh, the state counties at home testing. So um, I thought that was uh, that was pretty cool. That the uh, that the state included that in the in in the verbiage of the uh, MOA. Very nice. Thanks for sharing that, Mr. Denova. Um, the freeholders and Mr. Denova and the whole team um, deserves a big kudos. This is, this is unprecedented. What we're doing, it's best practices and it's it's innovation. Um, any way you look at it, it just has not been done, and still is is not. You know, we're we're still the only one. All right, the next part uh, is the contact tracing. I know you hear about it a lot, so I figure let me just let you know what you have done uh, so far. So we've hired six individuals um, to do contact tracing in Passaic County, um, and they're going just fine. They've been working now for maybe about two months. Um, the state has also provided 13 individuals in three batches to, to us, to the Lynx Health Agency. Uh, these 13 individuals are generally Rutgers students. Uh, they're getting their masters in public health, and uh, they're provided with the John Hopkins training, Rutgers training, ComCare training, which is the interface that uh, the DOH has purchased for specifically 
for handling COVID-19. And they're deployed to us, uh, Pase County Health Department, for training with the idea that we will deploy them to any uh, health department that requests it. So at our weekly meeting today with the health officers, uh, we decided that we're going to uh, just provide them with at least one to get started. In some cases, they don't need any right now. And um, as more and more people become on board with, uh, with the state, we're going to deploy them to all of the uh, counties uh, in the state. So the, the next bullet speaks to uh, 126 contact tracers within Passaic County because many of the health departments, if not all, have hired individuals outside of what I'm mentioning to you because it is, you know, it's best practices and uh, we've been doing that for a long time. So uh, they had asked me to, to gather that data for the state, which we did. It's now on their uh, dashboard and it's actually showing that of the 21 counties, the state county has the most contact tracers um, doing our, our work. So it's another place that we could feel, you know, that we're at least serving our community as best as we can, and we're we're expecting uh, what the others are doing. Next slide, please. Um, this is just to also let you know that uh, we are provided with uh, data every almost every day from DOH regarding individuals who have flown into or come into New Jersey. Um, by some um, uh, general means, some public means, we're provided with names and contact information, and we are required to uh, contact those people and um, uh, encourage them to, to voluntarily uh, self-quarantine for 14 days. This is based on the list that is provided at the New Jersey uh, COVID-19 dashboard. Next slide, please. This is the last slide. Again, all the things that we've been saying, wash your hands often, avoid those contacts and so on. This still, uh, these are still important things to do. As you saw from one of the earlier slides, we were in a very bad place at the end of March, April into May. And we were able to see that, that, uh, that small number over time, even though there is a little bit of an uptick when you compare it to where we were, we're still in a good place. And we could stay there if we continue to practice these things. It protects us, it protects our families and friends and each other. So to say, County, if you keep doing the right thing, we can continue to shine. And that's my report for today, Madam Chair. Thank you. Okay, uh, freeholder reports. I don't have anything. Um, freeholder the poor. Uh, thank you, Director. I have 21 uh, resolutions uh, for the Public Works Committee uh, for the review, and um, I'm asking the freeholders for their support. Thank you. Freeholder actor. Uh, I just briefly want to. Uh, the passing of Kathleen Karen, who, who we had the moment for among others, and, um, just representative on the Freehold Representative Space Committee for last um, for the last few years. I've had the great chance uh, and honor to work with her. Uh, it's a tremendous loss uh, to State County to all our communities. Um, uh, you know that Kathleen has touched every single community in Passaic County in some way in a meaningful, obvious way that affects our families um, and, and and will so for years to come. Um, and I'm really grateful to her, her memory, and I hope we will find ways to remember her and to honor her uh, for what she did for open space and green spaces in State County. And I'll also say, um, that as somebody who used to be a, a, a government employee, uh, whether at the local, state, federal, county level, wherever it may be, sometimes um, our, our government employees uh, get a bad rap. Uh, they are lumped in together. Um, and uh, certain cases are generalized for everybody. And I just want to say Kathleen represents um, some of the best county employees 
Battle, Dr. Gung Hill, and so many others who are putting themselves out there, who are dedicated, who really care, and are, uh, in, in Dr. Gung Hill's um, capacity, helping to save lives, and Kathleen's capacity, helping to change communities. Uh, and I'm really grateful for all our county employees um, and, 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 and government employees we have at every level who are stepping up. Uh, crisis, pandemic crisis, uh, so many others. Uh, so I, I just wanted to, to say that on in memory of Kathleen. That's really nice. Thank you. Field to Bartlett. Thank you, Director. Um, yeah, um, just a quick mention for anybody out there who isn't, doesn't already know this because they follow me on social media. We learned last week that the census count is going to be shortened by a month. Instead of running until October 31st, Halloween, it's going to be cut off on September 30th. That really creates a sense of urgency. We've got seven weeks left to count our hard to count communities. Every town has some. Uh, I brought this up on a conference call with Congresswoman Cheryl the other day. My town of Wayne has some, certainly Passaic, Patterson, um, the Valley Towns, Clifton, um, and, and so forth have communities that we still need to count. We're looking for every opportunity to get folks out there. And we've got local partners uh, from the Census Bureau who are great about getting enumerators out to the places where we tell them they ought to be. Uh, so I just want to appeal to everybody on the board and everybody who's watching. Um, let folks know, contact people in your contact list, on your WhatsApp group, on your social media. Uh, but also, if there's something coming up where a lot of folks are going to be there, and it's a chance to count hard to count communities, young families, students, seniors. Uh, let us know. We'll get census people out there and uh, we'll make sure we get as complete a count as we can. Because as we saw with the CARES Act funding, Anthony, you pointed it out. Uh, all the counties under 500,000 population had to wait until just the other day to get funding that we've been able to spend for the last uh, two or three months uh, getting ahead of some of these problems. So that's all. And I hope everybody's having a great August. Thank you. And for, for, for the Bartlett, if I could just uh, point uh, point it out, uh, as of yesterday, I believe, uh, at the county, there is still 25% uh, of our towns that are below the state average uh, in reporting. Um, I, I probably not all that surprising that, you know, our Patterson, uh, Passe, Prospect Park, um, I'm trying to think who the other, uh, maybe Haldon actually as well. I think it's those four towns that are that are under the state average, which is uh, 65 percent. Um, and say county were 63 percent. I think last census we were a little over 70 percent. So yeah, there's a lot of work to do, not only in those four yeah. communities, but in all of the communities to try to uh, beef up the census. I know people have been preoccupied and rightfully so with dealing with the uh, with the pandemic, but I think it really has to be the pedal to the metal now as the uh, as the deadline is coming quicker than we would like. Yeah, you're absolutely right. That comparison to 2010 is a little bit imperfect because 2010 is total count numbers. What we have so far is just the people who have been self-reporting because enumerators aren't even out in the field yet. But one of the messages I think we can all convey to people, uh, and it, it sounds a little bit unkind, but given what we're all dealing with in terms of COVID, if you don't want somebody coming to your door, respond online or respond by phone because those enumerators are gonna be out in the field and they're gonna be knocking on doors. They've been trained in social distancing. They're gonna be masked. There's a lot of protections there the Census Bureau is providing. But at the end of the day, if you don't wanna knock on your door, uh, go to my2020census.gov uh, or call the, the toll-free number and uh, get that report in for your family because what we've been able to do uh, you know, with CARES Act funding is, is entirely owing to the fact that we cleared that half million threshold 10 years ago. John, when are when are they going to be going door to door to do this count? I mean, now you got to shorten it by a month. So when are they yeah. going to get out there? They start next week, and that'll give them about six weeks in the field. But that's a fraction of what they had ten years ago. Okay. And, and for the Bartlett, if we could um, maybe coordinate with our mobile sites and maybe get some, you know, even if we had, honestly, even if we had one person uh, there working the line would would be helpful so uh, you know we're, we're we're scheduled through september 4th we're just working on the september october mobile testing but i think it would be important for uh, for us to have a census taker there if we could so, or if it's somebody who could be trained then you know we could 
have staff do it as well. But um, you know, you and I can talk about that offline. But I think that would be another sure. way to try to reach people. Let's do that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, freeholder best. I know he was on before. I'm here. Oh, I knew you were here. <laughs> yeah. Um. So. Uh, in addition to everything that everyone else mentioned, I just wanted to give an update on the uh, name change for the freeholder boards, the board of chosen freeholders. Um, as my colleagues know, but as many people in the public may not know, uh, both houses of the state legislature passed a bill to change the name of uh, board of chosen freeholders to board of county commissioners. Um, that piece of legislation has now made its way to the governor and uh, we're expecting him to sign it to take effect on uh, January 1st, 2021. So just wanted to uh, give the public an update that um, this year will be the last year of the Passaic County Board of Chosen Freeholders uh, and soon to be the Passaic County Board of County Commissioners. Both John Bartlett and myself aren't thrilled of the name of county commissioners. Um, we much rather would like to see a board of supervisors or even a board of governors, which um, more reflects what we do uh, in terms of county government. However, um, that was the name that was presented for the state, and that's where we are. So just wanted to give you an update there. Thank you. That's great. <coughs> Thank you. Um, Freeholder Duffy. On, a, on the agenda tonight in planning and economic development. Uh, I also would like to uh, shout out to uh, Kathleen Karen. I uh, I grew up with Kathleen. I've known her for quite a few years. She's an extraordinary woman, had some problems down the road, and, and you'd never know how how, uh, how serious they were towards the end. Uh, she was a great lady, and we should uh, do something just to remember her her uh, legacy in Passaic County. Also, Maria Magna, who's councilwoman that I was very close to over the years. She was a, uh, she was a real fire plug. She, she helped the community. She was a great lady. And uh, I was shocked. I know she wasn't doing well, but uh, sorry to see her, her passing. Two great ladies, Passaic County. Over to you, great lady. And where's, I'm gonna ask you, uh, Bruce James, is he out in the hallway somewhere? I mean, what's the deal? I'm glad that son is on the bus, but uh, Bruce looks like he's in the I've been here. I, I, I've been through the whole meeting, Terry. I'm right down in the corner here. Apparently, I'm not anywhere else, though. Now, <laughs> including on the, the agenda, which is good. I like how you decorated the place. Thank you. Anytime. <laughs> I'm home. <laughs> those, those are, for the record, are for, the record for the record. I'm not driving. I'm sitting in a, <laughs> in a stationary car. Yeah, tell that to the police officer who's behind. Freeholder <laughs> James. Uh, yeah, let me reiterate what Terry and every and Asana said. Uh, Kathleen and I were friends going way back. Uh, I can't tell you how many calls I got from various people in various municipalities who worked with her including the people uh, who run Evan with the Flags and Clifton. Uh, she was key into getting the, the grant for the, uh, to finish the killed in action section of, of that uh, very uh, big display of American flags. But, you know, everybody who talked to her, uh, talked uh, with her uh, just has nothing but uh, a praise for her. And everybody was shocked. <laughs> Maria Magda and I, Go back uh, not quite as long as Terry because I didn't grow up with her, but we go back about 45 years. She was on the uh, what was called the welfare board, but it was the board of social services now back in the day when I uh, first got on the union board. So I've known her since then, and we got to be friends in the Hispanic Multi Purpose Center, which was uh, the nonprofit that she built, just served so many people in in our in our towns, uh, not just Patterson but in Passaic County, she was a remarkable woman and left a remarkable legacy. She really did. Yeah, and you know, we can't forget Sammy Khalifa, who was oh, no, right. so important to all of us here at the county. I know he was, anybody needed help or any, any anything, Sammy was always one of the first ones to volunteer and we lost a great man when we lost Sammy. 
So we can't forget about him. He's a he was a great asset to our county. Anybody else? No. Okay. Let's move on to the oral portion. Can I have a motion to open up the public portion of the meeting. I'll move that. Okay. Roll call. Free holders. Opter. Yes. Bartlett. Yes. Best. Yes. Duffy. Yes. James. Yes. Deputy Director Lapore. Yes. Director Lazar. Yes. Um, Madam Director, uh, we received two emails to public at BassetCountyNJ.org. I'd like to read them into the record. Um, the first one is from uh, Kosti uh, Papa, Papa Johnny uh, from Little Falls. Uh, she is sending in a petition. Uh, attaches a petition signed by the residents of Cheryl Court, Little Falls, regarding the rainwater runoff from Patterson Ave. Although Patterson Ave roadway may not have changed during the repaving, this still does not diminish the fact that the rainwater is flowing into Cheryl Court. The local residents are calling on the county to mitigate the water runoff issue by issuing, by either installing a storm drain or creating a roadway dip to allow water to flow down Patterson Ave. This, con this concern was brought up during the last Passaic County Freeholders meeting uh, as well. And so for the record, and I have the petition, I'll, I'll forward that on to the freeholders. We also have a email from uh, Jay Cohen of, of uh, uh, he, he is um, sending a, a, a from Wanaku, the re um, his email says the resident uh, the recent power failures in many Passaic County communities caused hardship for our people. In Wanaku, the entire borough was without power because of a failure in a substation which services the entire borough. This is the same substation that went out during Sandy. Why can't the government insist that JCPNL maintain its equipment? JCPNL did not communicate with anyone. When I when I called, I spoke to customer service relations person in Ohio who knew nothing. Cablevision was also uh, was even worse in communications. They didn't even answer the phone. Who regulates our utilities? Who holds them accountable? Also, since Skyline Drive was closed due to down trees, traffic on Ringwood Ave at County Road was imp impossible. I never saw a sheriff's department presence, especially at the lights near 287. Also, I uh, also received a um, from, uh, from the mayor of West Milford, uh, Michelle uh, Michelle Dale, both freeholders and the minister Anthony Denova. I want to take a moment to thank you for all your support. Uh, of West Milford businesses via the grant funding through Passaic County. Much appreciated. Further, a special thank you to the freeholder Duffy for attending the tour of Greenwood Lake to address the uh, algae issue, the HAB issue. Sincerely, Mayor Dale, West Milford Township. Uh, and then also uh, just uh, two people checking in and saying hello. Uh, Latoya Chambers and Sanjay uh, Dasi. And uh, that that's all the communications that I've received. Okay. Should, we, should we give it another minute or? Uh, while we do that, uh, Director, because it, it, there is a delay on Facebook. So. Yeah. If you'd like, I could uh, answer some of the questions while we're waiting, Director. I know it's a little out of order, but. No, that'd be great. Right, a little time filler. It's either that or I could sing. So I'm pretty sure you'd probably <laughs> rather have me answer the questions. Um, I'd really love to hear you sing. Why don't you sing the answer? <laughs> uh, so Little Falls, I actually uh, sent out the, um, uh, the engineering crew today. They came up with about. I think four or five different possible solutions, um, some better than others. 
So what I've asked them to do is to go out there and meet with the local officials as well. So the Little Falls engineer, uh, DPW director and, uh, uh, and the administrator and our mayor to talk about what are some of those options that we can look at to try to address the concerns of the residents on Cheryl uh, Corp. So um, again, we are continuing to, uh, to take a look at that situation and monitor it and come up with a, a solution. Um, Jay, uh, if you're listening, I hope all is well. We haven't seen you in a while. Um, I, as far as the utilities, I'll, I'll leave that for you guys to, if you'd like to address that. Uh, typically, uh, uh, yes, the Ringwood Avenue was a uh, disaster during Skyline Drive uh, being closed. We, we were, I did receive a phone call from um, Mayor Mahler of Wanakue if the county could assist in trying to get um, I believe that was JCPNL, or could have, I believe it was JCPNL, possibly Orange or Rockland, I'm not sure which, uh, to remove uh, or at least to determine whether or not the wires that the trees were hanging on were live wires, because if they are, obviously we can't touch them. Um, we were able to assist Wanakue in getting them out there and opening up Skyline Drive, uh, relieving the traffic on Ringwood Avenue, which becomes a safety concern. Um, for emergency vehicles if they had to get through. Um, typically, the sheriff doesn't go out there on his own unless he's called by one of the municipalities if lights are, are out. Um, I, I, I can't speak for the sheriff. I'm, I'm certain that if he was called by one of the municipalities uh, that he would have sent people out there, um, but I could certainly double check that. But um, And I could discuss that with the mayors as well moving forward if they, you know, if they need that help, they could have. Uh, reached out. I know Ringwood had issues with their uh, radios, and the sheriff reached out to Chief Walker uh, uh, if we could assist in in in, uh, in that. So uh, I know when asked, we we typically would respond, and um, you know we again working well together with all of the mayors. So um, I, I'm I'm fairly certain that no fault of the towns, but uh, they didn't ask or they thought they had the, the ability to do it themselves. And I appreciate Mayor Dale's email. Um, I know West Milford got pretty got hit pretty hard uh, through through that uh, storm. So um, she's been a real trooper. She was without her own electricity, and um, and I know it was difficult up there in West Milford. So I do thank her for uh, acknowledging again. I think the great work and relationship. We've said it uh, frequently. Uh, if any positive comes out of this pandemic, it's the fact that. Uh, the 16 mayors and the board of children freeholders have really developed uh, a good working relationship and um, recognizing that we're all in this thing together. And, and I think moving beyond the pandemic, we're going to recognize that to provide the services that we all want to provide to the residents, that the more we work together, the more successful we're going to be. So, um, you know, Mayor Dale certainly has been a great uh, partner in all of this, as well as the other 15 mayors uh, in Passaic County. So thank you. Thank you, uh, Madam Director. Ma yeah, we we do have one more, uh, one more <laughs> Facebook comment, and it's from Latoya Chambers again. Uh, Hi, Mr. Denova. I work at Penis Healthcare. Can you please explain uh, why? Uh, explain to us why we didn't receive any hazard pay. Uh, hazard or carrying pay yet yeah, everyone swipes the badge to come into the building have been exposed so sad to see uh choose choose the job to stay so uh latoya i can tell you that uh, the hazard pay resolution has been drafted uh it has gone back and forth between the attorneys and we are actually waiting on the attorneys who represent uh, both the cnas uh, and the nursing staff um, but it is um, once once the union signs off on it, uh, the freeholder board will will bring it up at a meeting. We had hoped uh, it would be today. We actually hoped it would have been last month. Um, but again, I'll, I'll 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 hold my comment about attorneys. But uh, we are waiting for the union attorneys to uh, uh, to give us the green light. And that's about all that I could say on that. Thank you, Mr. Denova. Can I have a motion to close the public portion? So moved. 
Second. Three elders, Octor. Yes. Bartlett. Yes. Best. Yes. Duffy. Yes. James. Yes. Director Lapore. Yes. Director Lazare. Yes. Okay. Moving on to uh, our agenda. Uh, Matt Jordan, our County Council. Do you have any late starters, amendments? Uh, yes, we do have um, five late starters. I'll read the title into the record. Um, K71 is a resolution authorizing the Board of Contract to the Education Service Commission of New Jersey to move the Paving and Concrete LLC to furnish the law cleared for safety glass in numerous county facilities due to the spread of COVID-19 pursuant to NJSA 40A colon 11-10 at SEC. K72 is a resolution authorizing the purchase and installation of Go Hands Free Faucet and Flushometers at the Passaic County Prosecutor's Office located at 30 King Road, Toto, New Jersey, pursuant to NJSA 40 11-10 SEC. K73 is a resolution for award of contract agreement Peterson Inc. as part of the NJDOT Transportation Alternative Program TAP. 2016 Spruce Street Gateway Project Phase One in the City of Patterson, pursuant to NJS 52:34-9 at SEC. K74 is a resolution for award of contract to grade construction for the superstructure reconstruction of the Spruce Street Bridge Number 1600-018 project in the City of Patterson, New Jersey, as per bid number C-20-009 and pursuant to NJSA. 40A colon 11-24. And K75 is a resolution extending the contract by between the County Passaic and Bergen Risk Managers Inc. for third party administration of general liability and worker claims pursuant to NJAC 5 colon 30-11.6 at SEC. Just remind all the freeholders if you have anything that you want voted on individually to just make a motion and remove it from the consent agenda. That's all I have there. Can, can I have a motion to let uh, add the late starters K71 to K, uh, K71 to K75 to the agenda? I'll make Move it. Move. Oh, it's a lot. I'll second. <laughs> Take your pick. <laughs> I'm glad we're finally uh, moving the Spruce Street project and the bridge. Uh, Lou, can we have a roll call? Uh, I had free older Duffy make the motion and free older James uh, second. Whatever you have is fine. Free yep. older's Opter, Bartlett, yes. Best, yes. Duffy, yes. yes. Deputy Director Lapore, yes. Director Lazare, yes. Maybe you'll want to let me vote on this one too, though. Yes. So I'm a yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's okay. I skipped over you. I apologize. For all That's right. Okay, director, we're we're ready to move on to the. I have a the, motion to accept uh, the agenda K one through K seventy five. I will move that. Second. Okay. Free Olders Octor? Yes. Bartlett? Yes. Best? Yes. Yes. James? Yes. Free Director Lapore? Yes. Phil Yes. Okay, we'll move on to new business. Uh, can I have a motion to accept the personnel agenda? I will move that. Second. Free Olders Octor? Yes. Bartlett. Best. Yes. Yes. Duffy. Yes. James. Yes. Deputy Director Lapore. Abstain. Director Lazare. Abstain. We have a motion to move the bills list. I'll move the bills list. Second. Free Olders Octor? Yes. Bartlett? Yes. Best? Yes. Duffy? 
Yes. James? Yes. Deputy Director Lepore? Yes. Director Lazar? Yes. Uh, can I have a motion to adjourn? I'll move it. Second. Second. Three holders, Octor. Bartlett? Yes. Best? Yes. Duffy? Yes. James? Yes. Deputy Director Lepore? Yes. Director Lazar? Yes. Thank you, everyone. Be safe. All right. We'll see you. So, everybody. See you in September. Bye, everybody. Good night. Good night.